Hello and welcome to another edition of Save Your Sanity Livestream. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler and this is Help for Toxic Relationships. If you are with a person who makes you feel crazy, makes you second guess yourself, makes you question your sanity, you may very well be with a hijackle. I created that term, hijackles, and trademarked it so that you wouldn't have to have any of the skills required to make a clinical diagnosis. So all the people who can have a diagnosis of narcissism, sociopathy, psychopathy, um, antisocial personality, they have particular behaviors. And hijackles have the behavior. So we don't need to bother ourselves with the diagnosis. So I'm glad that you're here. And I'm glad that you are getting information that may help you make good decisions in your life. If you appreciate this information and you appreciate the show, I really ask for your support. Go to patreon.com slash save your sanity and you can pledge a dollar, five dollars, ten dollars a month there to keep the show going. Of course, all this information is free. However, it's really helpful if you help me by going to patreon.com slash save your sanity. And if you want to watch more of Save Your Sanity and you want to watch a lot of back issues, you can always go to wherever you like to get your podcasts or you can go to save your sanity podcast.com. So today we're going to talk about this very important topic, how to recognize covert narcissists. Now, really, we're talking about covert hijackles, of course, because they have the same traits. But covert hijackles, covert narcissists are truly crazy making because an overt narcissist, a malignant narcissist, they're just grandiose, they're arrogant, they're in your face, they're all about me.com. You're pretty clear what's going on with them, much clearer than you are when you're with a covert hijackal, because the covert hijackal likes to play on your heartstrings. You're, you're not sure if you should have sympathy for them, empathy for them. They, they make you want to do more for them because they like to play the victim. Nobody cares about me. Nobody wants anything good for me. Everybody prevents me from doing what it is I need to do. And you know that's not true. You know very well that's not true. But it pulls on your heartstrings and makes you want to say, oh, but I do care. I do care. And let me show you 10, 15 ways that I do. And then they say, oh, but, you know, nobody cares. And you jump in again. And again, and again. So for those of you listening to the live stream, I will be happy to answer your questions at the end of the broadcast. So stay tuned. And you can put your questions in the chat and I will get to them at the end of the broadcast. So let's move on with how to recognize covert narcissists. You know, one of the big things is that they really thrive from keeping you in chaos. They love to do that. They, they, they like to set you up to fail and then punish you for failing. They like to kind of push you over the edge and then say, oh, well, what's wrong with you? You know, you may even see that pattern in your relationship. And they like to make empty promises and then they enjoy your reaction when they don't deliver. Or they'll go a step further and they'll enjoy denying that you even they even made the promise in the first place. Now, both kinds, covert, overt, malignant narcissists, they'll all do that. But covert narcissists have a special way of doing it because they do it with that hangdog uh, feeling. And so it kind of pulls you in in a nonverbal way. And you don't really react against it like you do with somebody who's being overtly ignorant or arrogant. <laughs> you, you feel like, oh, I should lean into that person. So they like to make the empty promise in a passive aggressive way. And there are lots of episodes on passive aggression. They like to make that empty promise and then not deliver and then do the crazy making thing of suggesting that they never promised or 
that you never even asked. And they, they like that reaction. It gives them power. They like power. And they like to suck you in with a sob story. They like to play on your empathy. You know, I have clients all over the world. And if you want to be one, you can go to beaclient.com. That really is available. It's mine, beaclient.com. But I was thinking of one of the cases where the person was always in the poor me stance. Like, oh, I don't ever get a break. Nobody ever cares about what I think. Now, the person was very successful, but this is the game they played at home. And it takes me more time to uncover a covert narcissist, obviously, than an overt narcissist when I'm working with a couple or I'm working with someone who's trying to tell me what's going on with their partner because it's sneaky, it's passive, it's kind of under the radar. And so they, they suck you in with their sob story or their poor me story and they want you to feel responsible for them. Have you had that experience? They kind of want you to take responsibility for their feelings. And they want you to feel like you could help them if you only would, but you won't. And you can never give them enough to fill that void within them. But they keep saying, oh, but maybe you could, please. And they keep you stuck. And that's not going to work well for you. So these covert hijackals, they manipulate you with that empathy. They want you to feel they're so fragile and don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. Um, I'm just so fragile. I need you to take care of me. And they think that their emotions count way more than yours do. Have you noticed that? They're not interested in your emotions. They're not interested in what you're feeling they may listen, but they're not interested. They don't do anything about it. They don't change. But they really want you to be interested in their emotions. They really want you to get underneath that, right? That's what they do. So these covert narcissists, you can feel hurt by them because they lack in partnership and they lack in reciprocity. And if you haven't listened to episode 115, you know, I, I tell people all the time, if you want to be in a healthy adult relationship, listen to episode 115. And I've said, um, but if you want to be in a partnership that has equality, reciprocity, and mutuality, which is a healthy relationships foundation, you're not going to find that with a passive person who is a covert narcissist. So they like to be self-deprecating, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm not all that much. Oh, well, I did that, but it, you know, it doesn't, isn't significant. What are they doing? They, they're wanting to get you to reassure them, to validate them, to step up and say, oh, no, honey, that was great. And you have to watch for that because sometimes, you know, there are people with low self-esteem who say things like that and they really need you to validate them and that's true of a covert hijackal too but they do it forever you could validate them forever and they will keep doing it and that's the difference we all have a down day someday when we don't think that what we're doing is a big contribution or we're not sure that what we're doing we're doing well or well enough and we like it when somebody says, oh, yeah, you're doing fine. But when you're with a covert hijackal, it is going to be constant. It's going to, they always are needy. They're always desperate for attention. They always need to be shored up. And that can get extremely tiring. And then they have this way of giving backhanded compliments. They're not really compliments. But in the moment, they sound like they were going in that direction. Have you been sucked in with that one frequently? Because that does happen. And that is a problem. And they like to suggest that they're somehow incompetent so that you'll rush in and reassure them of their talent or their success and remind them of all the good things they've done. And there we are. It's all about them again. All about them. And they touched your heartstring and you rushed in to reassure them. So just like overt 
hijack calls, covert hijack calls, have a fragile sense of self, a fragile uh, sense of confidence. And with the overt hijack calls, it comes off as arrogant. So they cover over that fragility. But the, the covert narcissist plays on it, just plays on it, always needing reassurance, always making these poor me con constructs and keeping them going. And they're always asking for something from you to shore them up. And they have underhanded ways of explaining why something is your fault. Let that sink in. They have under, underhanded ways of explaining why something is your fault. They're not in your face about it. But if only you understood, then things would be different. And that's how they get you to respond emotionally before you really realize that they're looking to keep you engaged in shoring them up. And <clears throat> they always have a kind of gentle explanation of why they're not to blame. <laughs> you know, and they're, well, it's never their fault quite. And it's, it's not in your face like a, an overt narcissist would be. It's just, well, no, it, it didn't really happen that way. And, you know, sometimes people might think that I didn't, did it on purpose, but I didn't do it on purpose. And they get captured into that, that kind of gentle explanation of why they're not to blame. And then they are indignantly quiet about, well, I am a victim of your behavior. If you didn't do that, I wouldn't behave this way. You make me feel less than. You don't take my feelings into consideration. You are always thinking about what's best for you. You don't recognize what I'm going through. Are any of those things sounding familiar to you? Because if those are repeated patterns, you may well be with a covert narcissist, a covert hijackal. And, you know, they want you to feel small and they want you to feel blamed and they want you to feel shamed and they want you to feel guilty. And if you say to them, do you want me to feel blamed, shamed and small and guilty? They'll say, oh, no, no, that was never my intention. And yet they'll do it again and again and again because they do it in these gentle ways to kind of usher you into feeling shamed and blamed and small and guilty. And you start second guessing yourself all over the place. Am I doing a good job? And there's nothing wrong with second guessing yourself. That's a mark of self-awareness. I'm all for it. But once you figure out that you are leaning way too far in another person's direction and they're pulling on your heartstrings to keep you there, that's the moment of waking up and saying, mm -mm, no, no, this, this is not going to lead to equality, reciprocity, and mutuality. This is getting more and more one-sided, and I've been buying into it, and I thought I was being helpful and empathetic and understanding. And now I begin to see that, no, I've been pulled way over halfway. I am always being drawn into their drama. And that's the moment of awakening when you realize that that's so for you and a covert narcissist has pulled you in. So they make you second guess yourself and that's a tactic to manipulate you. They, they want you to question your own perceptions. Am I thinking clearly about that? Did I give them the benefit of the doubt? Is it possibly my fault? Well, maybe I should take responsibility for it. They want you to be captured into that second guessing. And then they want to keep you there. So they will reward you by being pleasant and nice for a moment. And then they will start with the poor me's again. As soon as they feel they don't have power, they will start with the poor me's and the victim. And so they're passive aggressive in so many ways. And I've done, as I said, many episodes on passive aggression. So go and look them up. But they're passive aggression in their post, their procrastination. And when they're procrastinating, and they don't do what they said they will do or what they promised to do or what they indicated they would do. That's a way of keeping the focus back on themselves. Now they're the center of the conversation again. 
yes, they didn't do it. And yes, you know, maybe they're a little lacking in um, integrity. But being the center of the conversation is way more important than lacking in, inte in integrity. And so it keeps the focus on themselves. And they'll be emotionally neglectful and unresponsive. You know, they'll go into a sulk. They'll go into the silent treatment. They will ignore you. They will refuse to give you a compliment. They will refuse to respond to something that is a feeling you've expressed. They won't talk to you about an issue. And they'll say you're always on their case. These are responses where you get a little glimpse of maybe this is covert narcissism. And you'll end up doing way more of the work in the relationship than they ever will. You will be bending over backwards and getting your exercise by walking on eggshells. And it is not a good way to get your exercise. So if you find yourself tired of bending over backwards, walking on eggshells, and trying to make yourself into a pretzel, it may well be that you are with a covert narcissist. Because you will do most of the work. And they only get give to get, just like other narcissists. They only give to get. They... They want to be seen. They want to be the focus of attention. You know, you can see them. There are covert narcissists and what are, what are called communal narcissists on social media. They're the ones who are always telling you, I don't mean to brag, but I just paid for the person's coffee behind me. Or I don't mean to brag, but they're bragging. You know, if you do good works for someone else, you do it because that's who you are. You don't go and put it on Facebook, in my opinion. <laughs> but, okay, so they only give to get. And uh, you need to be clear about that because, again, you will be at a deficit from doing all the giving, and that's not healthy. So the, the, um, the thing that you really need to understand is it's not you. They want to make everything your fault. They want to make it that way. But that's not true. It is not your fault. It is not you. So don't take their behaviors personally. That's what they want. They want to keep you engaged. They want to keep you focused on them. They want to keep your heart open and taking care of them. They want you to keep feeling sorry for them. They want to keep you engaged. And it's time to pull back and get into some form of equality in that equation. That's a really good start. Pull back and say, am I actually like way overextending in their direction on a daily basis? And if so, maybe you're with a covert narcissist. So you need to set some emotional boundaries. They lack empathy, but you don't know when to give empathy and know when you're enabling that's a big difference because covert narcissists have a strong sense of self-entitlement and they will exploit you. They will keep pulling you in, you know, affirm me, affirm me, validate me. And what about you? Oh, that doesn't matter. You are there to meet my needs. You are there to take care of me. You are there to make me feel better. And oh, by the way, I promise I will never feel better because I want you to keep giving to me. That's what happens when you're with a covert narcissist. So know what you know. Get really clear that this happens and it is a pattern. It is a cycle. These are the traits of covert narcissists. And Know what you know and don't believe them. Don't believe what they're telling you. Get really clear within yourself. You know, when I'm working with my clients, they say, should I leave? And I say, if there's not sexual or physical abuse, no. And the reason is that you want to be empowered first. You want to know how to set boundaries. You want to know who you are. You want to know how to, how to communicate. You want to know how to fill your own cup. And stop bending over backwards and walking on eggshells. So you need to take your empowered self to make the decision to leave. And then, as I said, unless there's physical or, or sexual abuse, 
use that time to empower yourself, to learn some strategies, to take some time to practice those strategies in this difficult relationship and watch what's happening. It'll help you calibrate the depth and degree to which you are with a covert narcissist and validate your own thoughts and your own perceptions and your own feelings. Don't look to the covert narcissist to validate them for you because they won't. That's the game. And when you do that, you'll create healthy emotional distance and you'll begin to see the issues for what they really are and how the covert narcissist wants to keep you so engaged. Come take care of me. Come take care of me. Come reassure me. Come validate me. And every now and again, I'll say something nice about you to keep you engaged. I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I hope this has been helpful to you. And you can always listen to more episodes of Save Your Sanity Podcast at SaveYourSanityPodcast.com. I've shown you that URL. You can find it easily. Here it is. And engage in learning. Educate yourself. Really understand what's going on. And I look forward to talking with you very soon. And for those of you on the broadcast now, I'm going to answer your questions. So let's see what we have here. Hi, Katarina. Nice to see you there. Oh, here's a good one. You're shoveling yourself into an unfillable black hole when you try to help them. Oh, yes, you are. And you will give and give and give and give. And every now and again, they'll throw you a bone. And then yet, no. <laughs> then all of a sudden it's over and you begin to realize if you're wise that this is a never-ending black hole and you're absolutely right and Ekaterina says yes yes Cartman's triangle they behave like aggressors but try to represent themselves as victims exactly you know, Ekaterina, you always have great things to add to our conversation. So thanks for doing that. Because this is important for us to understand that that there are these things that people do and they may be hard to spot. That's why I have that free ebook. You can go to hijackles.com and get the free ebook, How to Spot a Hijackal. Because these ones, particularly these ones, are hard to spot. And they behave like victims while really being aggressors, as Ekaterina says. And then here's another. They go crazy if you seem in any way bigger or better than them. Oh, yes, they do, because they're not having any of that. <laughs> I had a former female acquaintance in social media who got upset at me for perceiving me as too smart for her. <laughs> well, that's her problem. If you're too smart for her, you're better off on your own, and she's better off looking for somebody that's at her level. <laughs> so good for you. I mean, that's very clear and good for you for saying no to somebody who wants to behave that way. It's just not okay at all. Ekaterina said, the inside dialogues inside your head can make you crazy. Yes, and they go on and on and on, and you keep giving people the benefit of the doubt, the benefit of the doubt. You keep wanting to think the best of them, and that's how they keep you hooked because you're constantly having disputes with them in your head. Absolutely. And, <clears throat> okay, Video Vault. This one makes a huge deal about being a super mom to her autistic sons well that's a very complicated equation and that would be very difficult to sort out to find if there is covert narcissism going on in that situation because so many feelings and so much oh you know people with autistic children get very tired and then they shore themselves up and then people tell them how wonderful they are and they think they have to be more wonderful and then they start believing it or you know there's it's a very very complex equation never before felt so exhausted confused lonely and scared this young female narc abused me in the most insidious ways so tactically planned and executed oh i'm so sorry they are they are insidious and tactical and they are very focused on getting what they want and what they want is power over you they want control 
it's very sad, but don't put your compassion hat on. Just keep on your rational, logical, linear hat and say, no, I'm not going to have that in my life anymore. It's just not useful. And in the case of friends, leave sooner. <laughs> yeah. Yes, for sure. It's easier to spot one who's just passing and you can make a friendship with them or not. But if you happen to be related to them, it's more difficult. And if you've been in a long-term relationship, um, oh, here's a good one. I told him I'm done caretaking. No response. Yep, I'm not doing it anymore. Yay! <laughs> Let's uh, certainly uh, give you lots of kudos for that, Katie, because <clears throat> the moment that you actually see it, which is why I'm doing today's broadcast in particular, to help you actually have that moment of seeing what's going on, of finally going, oh, yes, that's what it is. That's the moment you can go in a better, more healthy direction for your self-esteem and, and uh, for your well-being. But until you come to that decision point where you say, wow, I've been in this cycle and I am going to step outside of it, that's the moment of clarity. That's the moment you start moving in the direction of your own sanity too. And Ekaterina says, the question is what to do if they have power over you. For example, they're your doctor. Well, I have a big thing to say about doctors. Uh, Ekaterina said she had such a neurologist. I think doctor relationships are very important for you to establish as a team. If I go to a new doctor, I ask them, you know, are we a team? Because if we're not equal, I know about my body and you know about science and we're going to bring those two things together, then I need to have an in-depth conversation with a doctor about that because I don't believe MD stands for medical deity. <laughs> I know that this is a team and if someone is telling me they know everything, I'm going to move on and find another doctor. I do not believe that. So that can be very, very difficult. But that sounds more like an overt narcissist, someone who says, I have to know. And if you ever want to have a little bit of fun um, and a little bit of enlightening, um, go over to, uh, just put into Google, career paths of, of psychopaths. <laughs> And you'll find in the top 10, there are doctors in there. <laughs> so that's um, something to watch. And attorneys and a few other surprising people. And, and the rest are kind of unsurprising. But, you know, notice that anywhere that there is a profession where people can have ultimate power over others, you will find a higher predominance of narcissists and psychopaths and sociopaths, obviously. So Video Vault said, I saw this covert one before others in social media did. She has weaponized a few people in the group. They cater constantly to her victim identity. Yes, glad you pointed that out because it happens on social media all the time. They just keep drawing the attention to themselves of the group. I need help. I need you to understand. Nobody gets me. Nobody ever gives me what I want. Nobody ever understands me. And so they are drawing the attention of the group. Narcissistic, yes. I need to be the center of attention. I need to be the focus. And when they're playing the victim, everybody wants to rush in and help because that's the nature of a healthy person. Like, can I help you? Well, I will. And uh, we have to be sure that we are not overly empathetic, that we are not bending too far in other people's direction at the cost of our own health and well-being. So very, very important. So every week I do this show here and I'm happy to have you join me and join in the conversation. Please invite your friends to come along and be part of all this. Um, I invite them to come on over to the YouTube channel for Relationship Help. You can always find me there. And of course, that's the same name as my website for RelationshipHelp.com. So I'm Dr. Roberta Shaler. I'm delighted that you've been with me. And yes, know when to leave. 
Healthy people, as Video Vault just put in there, healthy people do not cling to being a victim. No, they're looking for a solution and they are ready to become healthier and more themselves, feeling better about themselves and feeling strong and empowered. Such an important thing. So again, thanks so much for being with me and I look forward to talking with you again soon. Take good care of yourself because you matter.